What's going on guys? So today in this video, what I want to talk about is what to do whenever you get your new gecko in um, and it is either your first one or you're just adding more to your collection. You know, there's a couple steps that you'll want to take to ensure that that process of introducing that animal um, and getting it established goes as smoothly as possible. So I'm going to go over that in this video here. So first and foremost, congratulations on your new animal or if you know you're watching this before you get it, I guess a future and congratulations. Um, what you want to do, you know, obviously you unbox your animal, look it over, right? Make sure that there is no visual health issues or injuries or anything like that from shipping. Sometimes they can rub their nose um, against the side of the container and it will rub the skin off of it. It looks clear kind of but or white That's okay. That will heal over time Obviously, just make sure that the animal is in the condition that that breeder sold you to that animal um, to be in So once you take it out and you look it over and everything is good um, The next step is to put it in its enclosure now, this is not its permanent enclosure. This will be a quarantine enclosure because you want to be able to keep it in an easy enclosure that is going to be simple to monitor any type of things that may be going on or any type of behavior that you don't think is normal before you introduce it into um, the other enclosure that you have set up for it and around your other animals. The reason this is important is because, you know, once you already have it in its permanent enclosure, if for whatever reason it did have some type of, you know, disease or anything like that, it's gonna be 10 times harder to get it out of that enclosure because now it's been all over those things in there, you know, the plants, the soil, all of that. Um, so what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you an opportunity to make sure one, you know, it's eating, it's hydrated, it's looking healthy and then two, anything that it touches in your quarantine enclosure you don't have to transfer that over into the full enclosure so you can take that stuff wash it separate so if there was anything on there it's killed right there on the spot and when it gets into its new enclosure you know that everything is clean you know sterile and brand new and good to go so what you'll want the easiest thing for me especially because this is just going to be temporary is you want to have just a Tupperware bin um, because you know you just want it cheap it doesn't have to be 100% the full you know magnificent enclosure that's you know natural planet all that right all we're doing here is we want to keep it simple so this is what I would be using for maybe, you know, a baby to sub it all. If it's an adult, I actually won't even put it in that big of an enclosure. I'll put it in something like this that I have these isopods in, which is just a, um, it's either 12 or 16 ounce um, storage tote. So this is a good size for an adult. You know, again, these are not permanent but um, it's given enough space that it will have its own hide plants, you know, stuff like that in there, but that way I'll be able to monitor it and I'll make sure that it's establishing smoothly. So when you have something like this, the best thing to do, use a paper towel. The reason you wanna use a paper towel is because it's easy to change and also it's, you know, when they're fresh, they're perfectly white. So any poop or anything like that that's on there it's gonna be easy to see and make sure that you notice that one, they are pooping, which means that they're eating. And then two, which I'll get to in this video, you wanna um, look into their poop as well because that's one of the biggest signs if something is wrong. Um, so I'm gonna use a paper towel. So after you have the paper towel in there, the second thing that you'll wanna use is just something simple like this paper towel roll or maybe an egg crate or just something that again, if they defecate or anything like that goes on, it's easy to visually see on something like this. If you use cork bark, it's gonna be very difficult to look in the little grooves and cork, you know, and see if there's anything wrong. And it's also a little bit more difficult to clean cork bark as well. And the same thing if you're using like a live substrate or if you're using soil or anything like that. 
Um, this is gonna make it much easier to monitor your gecko. And then the last thing that I will use is just a plant. I love these from Pangea. I use, you know, apart from the previous ones before they had these, these are the only um, fake plants that I use because they're inexpensive and they give you a very big uh, bush. And I like because they come in red or orange colors, which is, you know, gargoyles. And what I will do, especially for babies, is these plants come on these little strands here. And on these strands, at least for the Pangea ones, there's two in there that connects right there. So what you can do is you can pull these apart like this, and then you have the perfect size plant to throw in these enclosures because if you try throwing something like this in there, it's way too big for something as small as this or even for these size enclosures here. So I'm just going to use a one to two strands. If it's a real tiny gecko, I'll just use one strand. If it's a little bit bigger, say, you know, 10 to 20 grams, I'll put two in there. Um, but say if it's something like this, just to give you a visual, this is as simple as it's gonna get because like I said, you need to monitor the animal. That's the biggest thing. It's not necessarily about the aesthetics or you know, giving them the craziest little jungle gym to crawl on. It's about making sure that this animal's healthy, it is okay to expose to the other animals in your collection, and you aren't going to run into any health issues that were undisclosed by that breeder. So if I keep it in something simple like this, it's gonna be a perfect setup to monitor everything. If you handle the gecko, if you you know mess with anything in the enclosure, you wanna have your hand sanitizer on standby. So that way, if you go to handle another animal in your collection, you wanna sanitize your hands before you go touching the new one to the ones that you already have in your collection. So that way, it can potentially kill any type of um, parasites or anything like that that could be going on there. So that's really important is make sure you're as sterile as can be. Um, and when I use these quarantine enclosures, I'm not putting it in a rack like this, that they're right next to each other, because again, that's gonna defeat the purpose. I'm keeping this um, separate from the rest of the collection, maybe even a separate room, just until I get it established and then whenever I touch it or touch anything that's in the enclosure, I'm gonna always hand sanitize um, before I do anything else. The time, the amount of time that you want your animal in that enclosure is really going to vary on how that animal is doing. I would say minimum, you want three weeks um, because in that point of time, you're gonna get a couple cycles of you know eating, pooping, you're gonna see how everything is going. It's gonna give that animal time to relax from being all stressed out from the shipping and everything and you're gonna make sure that that animal is eating and everything. And then also, um, it's just gonna make sure that if there's anything wrong, that's a good enough amount of time for you to spot the, the issue there. Now, the reason I touch on this is because Earlier in this year, it actually happened twice that I received a gecko that ended up having parasites. Now, here's the tricky thing about parasites, is that a lot of times these animals are going to have a parasitic load inside of them that they can live with their whole entire life. But what happens is whenever they get stressed, like sh being shipped, um, that can cause, you know, that immune system that they have to, you know, not work as efficiently as it should. And that can cause that parasitic load to increase inside of them and then be present in their poop and things like that. Now, this isn't 100% the fault of a breeder. Um, because like I said, it could, you could have a gecko in your collection that, you know, has a, you know, some type of parasitic load in them and never know, never have any issues, never have 
anything go wrong. But uh, whenever you ship and they get stressed or something like that happens, it shows up. Um, so as you can see in this picture right here, it's a little gross, but in this picture, if you look closely, you can see that little clear worm in its poop. Now, I find this is the only parasite that I've had to deal with. Um, and they've come from two, well, one thing they have for sure have come from is the gecko's feeder insects um, that I've 100% observed after feeding insects of certain kinds like crickets or black soldier fly larva that it caused um, the animals to have parasites. And then also the other way that I've seen them is from you know receiving a gecko from shipping but at the end of the day that gecko probably got it from another gecko in that person's collection or again you know feeder insects and things like that so this is one of the biggest things to look out for because these parasites can very very easily spread to the rest of your collection now this one for example um, that I showed in that picture right this is the one that I have dealt with before and a lot of times you'll find it um, if they have like a very diarrhea type of poop you'll see them it's really gross because you will see the worms it's not like they're microscopic you will see them crawling around and stuff in that gecko's poop um, but you want to trust me you want to take the time to quarantine be patient give them a couple weeks monitor for something like this because if you don't those uh, parasites or any other health issues could easily spread to a whole collection and once you have something like those worms in your collection you know your collection is somewhat of a average to large size it's extremely difficult to get those out of your collection because these you know eggs that these worms lay are so microscopic and they can spread you know just you have no clue and they're spreading all over and then it's a nightmare because um then you literally have to treat everything you have to clean everything right if anything touches whatever it's gonna be exposed and it's a horrible situation so this is why it's so so important to quarantine your animals before you get them i will make a video on if this ever comes up with these specific parasites how to treat them uh, because i've already done it before and some tips and tricks to prevent them from ever happening so that will be another video that i make but i just want to let you guys know you know whether you're adding your fifth gecko or you're getting your first this is just something to really consider um, whenever you get that gecko in order to ensure that not only the animal is healthy but also that you have the best experience possible because at the end of the day that's what really matters because you know no one wants to you have a passion for something like this and then get it crushed because you deal with all these problems or an animal dies or you know anything like that so that's why it's really important to make sure you are thriving as well as the animal. So, um, yeah, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you know where to reach me on Instagram at Red Rack. That's the best place to find me. The other links to my social media will be down below in the description. But again, thank you guys so much for your support. It means a ton to me. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you have, you know, any questions, concerns, want to check the availability, like I said, reach out to me, check the website, Morph Market, links down below, all of that. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate everything. I'll see you in the next one.